Uh, I think it's pretty fair to favor Kai P, you know? Uh, again, boot camping, doing their own, uh, kind of getting ready for the major thing, right? Gonna right. get ready to play some European qualifiers. So uh, they're supposed to be on their top form, or at least getting very close to that. Um, question mark, formerly level up if you guys were watching any of them in some of the other tournaments like D2CL and whatnot. Uh, not having the best time lately. They played a couple matches for like some of the uh, the Summit stuff and whatnot, but now, uh, of course, as you mentioned there, stand in Ake, pretty sick. Um, Pwn being a, a pretty notable drafter as of late. And I guess that means, so Mr. XXX, that is a rise, by the way, mm. so he is here. Okay. Um, I guess they just haven't all tagged up into this whole question mark name as yeah. they were still under, like, level up and everything, so they'll have to get themselves Ten into that. But um, Certainly a formidable team. Well, we'll see how this goes for Five them, but Kai B definitely give a, a little bit of an odds on favor, I'd say. So there is the Omni Knight and Outworld Devourer. It's a very potent one two combo. But question mark go for something a bit different. They go for the Shadow Demon, which is obviously very popular the past couple of months, but uh, has been toned down a bit, if you will, Trent. And then the Nyx Assassin as well. So some interesting choices here for question mark with their first two picks. Yeah, it's a smart opener from question mark too. Um, with the Omni Knight still being in the pool, you not only have the option of starting your own draft off with Ten that seconds. Shadow Demon plus, you know, any Illusion Hero, um, Juggernaut still in, Luna, well, there goes Jug, but um, Luna still in, uh, those kind of strategies. And then you have that Purge, too, to help out, because, again, you know with OD, he almost always has some sort of a buffing hero. So being able to Purge OD in the middle of a fight, in this case, taking off Repel or Guardian's Angel and uh, what other uh, buffs might be thrown on top of him and stop him from just running rampant throughout the engagement is very important for question mark. So Shadow Demon was just overall a, a fabulous one. And then Nyx Assassin, don't really need to say much more than that. Probably the uh, the number one counter most teams look at up against OD. Five yeah, Mana Burn, pretty freaking good, obviously. Nyx Assassin it's ridiculous. It's like 600 today. damage it's in kind like of 25 minutes. Yeah, it's uh, kind of a nuts amount of damage that you're giving. But uh, I like Kai P banning up the chin. They just, they, they just had to deal with it. Wasn't, uh, wasn't a very fun game for them, that second game between friends of them. The Shadow Demon pick, obviously, you talked about the Luna. I'm all for that, and and I'm glad that Luna's seen this resurgence. Even with the help of the Shadow Demon, I think it's nice. Luna was kind of out of the meta for a, lo a little bit of time here uh, not too long ago. She was picked occasionally, but wasn't as picked as much as she once was. So, Five question mark have a lot of options here with their particular illusion hero that they want to go for. Obviously, Juggernaut, like you mentioned, has reserve been banned out time. for them, so that's not going to be the choice. Plenty of reserve time for both sides, obviously. This is just the start to the draft, but... Uh, I don't know. This is going to be interesting. I, I'm. So, this is the. This is the first exposure I'll have to OD Omni Knight together. Question mark will go for the Razor. Uh, not the best illusion hero, but a very strong hero overall. I think Razor's in a very good spot now. Trent, what do you yeah. think? Just uh, looking to match that up up against the OD. Pretty much the only hero that has a somewhat decent time against that hero in mid. Uh, OD like Razor Viper. That's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So yep. uh, we've seen teams Five send pretty much any hero you can imagine into the mid lane up against the OD and typically having to rely on some jungle farm or just knowing that they're not going to get a lot out of the lane. Uh, but dire side, it's just brutal. Like at least in the Radiant, you have that camp nearby that you can go and farm if you're like a Storm Spirit or even a Juggernaut or something. But if you're Radiant OD uh, going up against someone, then you need someone who just has to sit. There's no time to go to the jungle and Razor is pretty much their only option. Um, it does fit that tempo of someone like a, uh, a Luna or something, but it can also allow you to go back into something a little bit deeper, like an Annie Mage, and, and Razor might be able to kind of hold out your mid-game for you. Yeah. Razor's just kind of... He's one of those interesting types of carries to me. He just he doesn't fit that late-game carry type mold, but he's often very strong in that early to mid-game. Obviously, Static Link and Land is very strong, like you talked about again, against Outworld Devour and Viper, obviously, with him. Uh, the two good combos against that particular hero Slaughter. in lane. And then they'll go for the Slaughter for Kaiki, Dyer interestingly enough. Hmm. Strong offlaner. Yeah, um, I guess so. Good initiation for the OD. And we get our Nova Radiant coming out this time. Um, Slider Omni's pretty potent dual offlane too, like where Omni can just kind of rotate in and hide in the fog for a bit. And kind of like Sanking, where you're expecting Slider to be near the wave anyway, but you never really know he's just going to throw out that crush. If Omni Knight's hiding in the fog and just chucks out that purify and you know hundred and some pure damage pretty brutal yeah especially against some of these squishier heroes Five as well which remain. there are plenty in this game question mark we'll go ahead and pick up the loot of the least shocking pick of the draft so far Reserve i think time. yeah uh, probably that's yeah. <laughs> not surprising to anyone really at this point in time <laughs> life stealer chose for kp and Dyer again team, another yeah. hero that's seeing more and more resurgence as we progress through this month of dota yeah, good partner in the slider 
Um, typically, it's the mid laner that we always look towards for being the best friend of the life sealer, or sometimes maybe like a Ricky. But uh, slide eyes can be pretty handy here. Ten seconds and can even get a little bit of work done without the blink. That yeah. just means their last pick will be that position remaining. five more than likely. I'm not sure if they're going to run like a... I would assume this would be a Bambo Omni Knight because he fits his playstyle pretty well. Yeah. So I'd be looking to ban out some sort of position five. Honestly, considering he just played Lion two games in a row and you're looking at Illusions coming out from a Luna and a Shadow Demon, I wouldn't be too surprised to just see a Lion ban because that the whole like Hex and Mana Drain getting rid of two Illusions could be pretty big for them. Well, what support yeah. do they go for here in the fifth position? The, the Lion is banned out now, but what, what would they grab in, instead? I mean, like I'm trying to think of... The best thing they can do here. Um, Keeper of the Light is still in the pool. Gives the... Like, once the Manta comes out from the Luna, she can purge it off to, to get rid of that blind. But it's actually pretty good because Razor's all right-click damage. Luna's all right-click damage. Um, the Mass Illusions. Like, if the Illusions are already out and then you blind, you're reducing a lot of damage. It helps against the D push if you fall behind early. Omni Knight struggles with mana problems. OD can as well. It fits them pretty damn well. Yeah, that's true. That's a very good point. Uh, they, they would lock lock. They would lack. Excuse me, lock down a little bit in the early stage of the game. Maybe Lant Manly could be skilled up, obviously. But you, you do have a slaughter. You do have an OD. So you have Astral. You have Slithery Crush. But I do feel like there's not really. If they go for a Keeper Light Omni Knight, there's there's not much roaming potential Radiant there. There's not much pick. in terms of getting stuff done in the early stages of the game. At least not that I can see. It's just not. No, no, you're definitely there. right. Um, and he's also pretty weak up against Nyx Assassin, too. So there's always going to be some sort of a catch. Right. That's the one downside. But I do agree with you. I do think it functions very well overall Ten in terms of the game plan. Remaining. However, Kaipi just got reamed within 20 minutes. So I, I don't know if they're really... They're, they're, they're probably thinking, like, what can we do as far <laughs> as laning is concerned? Well, they go for another here with a, a, a severe lack Dying of lockdown. But pick. they get the silencer instead, which pretty good against a lot of these heroes, especially against uh, Luna and team fights and things like that. You just pop that global silence, but also a lot of good damage coming in from the silencer as well, some good utility. I don't know how I it's, feel about this pick. It's interesting. Um, it has some issues. Ten it's really good against Shadow Demon. Um, IG Vitality has been picking it a ton against Shadow Demon and OD because you have the Astral saves coming out and then the Disruption saves coming out. So whenever you saw two like lineups having both those heroes, every time you're seeing silencer picked up over in China, and it's working out well because you just silence when you initiate, those saves aren't there, hero dies, and you're fighting an advantage at that point. So um, that'll be Kaipi's goal here. Razor kind of notoriously does okay versus silence, though. Like, um, unless they really get the jump on you, if you're the team jumping in, like, question mark, the chances are the silence is going to be popped after you've already ultied and you probably already have a static link target. Uh, and then Razor's fine. Like, he does not care about yeah. that at all. Yeah. Luna naturally builds Manta. Mm -hmm. So there's also some downsides to the silencer here. That's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking. It just doesn't... I, I definitely would have liked to keep her the light more, but again, obviously Kaipi might have some ideas to what they want to do with this particular hero. Akai's going to pick up the Enchantress last. I, I can't really think of a much better hero other than Chen for Akai. I mean, there's a couple of other good ones here, but he is going to be playing the Enchantress, which is, uh, I'm sure, frustrating for Kaipi. But we'll see how things turn out as we jump into the game. It is game number one of a two-game series. Uh, Kaipi, obviously, probably the favorite team, as you were talking about during the draft. I would agree with you here. Like, question mark have some solid players in their own right. We talked about Rise, obviously, Ake, MDL, very solid player. Another level one pause at before the bell. <laughs> it always happens. They've got online Dota. And then the all chat comes out, too. More often than not, sometimes. Quick pause. But, yeah, I mean, looking at the draft, though, who do you still favor here? Like, really getting into it. Like, I mean, assuming... Just who do you think is, is really got the better draft in this situation? Because to me, I, I do like question marks draft a little bit more, especially with that Enchantress pickup. Yeah, I think um, Ake should be able to get a lot done. It's very similar to the Chen. And we have seen more and more teams like uh, the all-out push strat really highlighted it. But other teams have been looking towards this like Chen or some other early pushers that try and take advantage of OD. Because, you know, OD just wants to sit in lane. He can't really do anything else. Doesn't farm the jungle. Doesn't farm stacks very well. Just wants to like dominate his lane, get a four staff, get a dragon lance. One of the usually the four staff first, and you know working towards that hurricane bike, and then fight around with your team. So if you can just avoid that uh, that OD for a while, because you know they have to sit in the lane, uh, you can knock down a lot of these early game towers. This so is... if that works, I think I favor Dire. Yeah, this is something else going on. Some, some serious <laughs> shenanigans happening. This they they want to block this Enchantress camp because it's the most important thing to take care of at the the start of the game. Whenever Chen or Enchantress are on Dire side, you're always going to see are this they blocked run out. Back into each other, it might actually Seven happen. Seconds. Nope, there comes Necroman. Three three is going to spot him, and here we go. Necroman is way out of position. 
And they're gonna use the curse. They actually get off the open wounds as well, and Fluff will get the first blood, and it's just that first easy. Blood, All right. Last word. That's unfortunate. He he just went too far ahead. Luna's pretty speedy, and you gotta be careful. Yeah, it's also worth noting that it's 3-3 uh, three, three who has picked up the Omni Knight. And, uh, I mean, we've seen plenty of core offlane Omnis. We've also seen plenty of position 4 Slardars, so it's not the craziest thing. It's going to help the levels get up for the Omni Knight so that he'll be relevant. Uh, what we'll probably see... Oh, wow, look at this play. Did he actually get there in time? Yo, Sing Sing. That was... That was dope. That was kind of right. crazy. I was Atta wondering boy. what the TP scroll was going to do. He actually got there in time to block. That that is nice. We've seen a couple teams do that with smokes, but that it does. I haven't seen the the mid laner with it. So Ooh. well played. His block is better. He wins his block. It, yeah, his yep. block is better. It just Dang. barely too. GG. Honestly, yeah. like I'm just I'm done. You're tilted. <laughs> if you're a rise, you're tilted, man. That's it. You're done. -zo. Wait, wasn't he just bottom? Like I swear. <laughs> I was um, like I got this. But uh, what we'll probably see is some kind of unique farm priority where you're going to see pretty similar net worths throughout the game on sexy bambo and three three. Uh, for now, it's just very important on levels. So, we'll see how that goes. Mango open wounds. Nice appeal from Bone. Make sure that Bone 7 can't quite get something done. And find himself a kill. Some tangos going. And Doc is going to rotate down bottom pretty early on here again. So, that early rotation that we saw from the Chen last game, it's going to be something that Kai P has to deal with. Top lane, at least more rotation as well as you do see, of course. Bambo rotating up. I, I, I do want to point out, and obviously, I'm not the end-all be-all on this type of thing, but I've never seen a support slaughter work. We'll see how Bambo does it. MDL is actually caught in a bad spot. Purification is going to do a lot of damage here. Probably gets the kill, and will with the last right click from 3-3 getting it done. And so, nicely done from Kai P picking it up and, in fact, getting the first two kills in this game. Oh, and then down bottom as well, though. Enchant just making the plays happen. Yeah, I missed it. Just missed it. Okay, we'll grab the kill. So, that early rotation does pay off. Again, Ake, probably one of the best chance players in the game. And uh, he will rotate and find that, that kill. And so Bone Simmons left to his own devices. Actually, only has three last hits. The Nyx Assassin is CSing better, for at least for now. It's still very even. The Impale's going to come through Ake. He's got Enchant ready to go. Rage, not up and ready for Bone Seven. So he needs to be careful. There's going to be the open wound spike here. Pace, nicely timed, but will only help him for a moment. There comes the Curse. With a couple of right clicks, this should be a kill. And they turn it around, so Bone Seven does pick it up. He's Ake even dropping low. Yeah, he's going to have to hightail it out of there and get behind the tower. No regen except for that clarity, but that's not going to help you. He only have one tangle left. Meanwhile, mid lane, Astral's to their crush. Bambo is rotated in. No boots, but he's got that wind lace with the extra speed. Not really much he can do. Arise, he's got that, he's got that extra regen, but is it going to be enough? Bambo's Will he survive? Bambo is not going to stop diving that tower to get that kill. Sing Never. Them. <laughs> Sing and Bambo will go ahead and take the tower for a bit, but they'll salve up and be fine, so... Uh, there's one thing you can guarantee with Bambo, so... Uh, just denies himself up, of course. And it's a great game to be positioned for Slider. I, I want to say it was Misery who was playing it, a TI2, where they kind of do this, like, you early on pick the Slider. I mean, in that case, you're just like, oh, that's a Moose Slider. Like, guaranteed, right? Obviously. Right, yeah. uh, no question. Um, but it works out pretty nice. And when you have the setup coming in from the OD, and then with the Omni Knight, it's someone who, again, plays near the wave and has this degen aura, so... When, before you even see the slider, Omni's just like running at you, and you're like, okay, well, he's just doing this the entire time he lanes anyway. So, like, like right now, he's just running at the Shadow Demon. The Shadow Demon doesn't know to, if there's a slider. He has to use his, his disruption there to save himself. Yeah. He just runs over him and gets some damage going. It's nice. Yeah, I, I like the draft that Kaipi have put together for now, and I will say I am a bit ambivalent towards this Slaughter support, but it seems to be working out. Meanwhile, Bone 7 almost going down bottom. Tornado was up. Bone did hit a nice impale. It looks like Bone 7 will back up. Uh, no salve. Fluff only has one tango. It looks like Bone7 will probably maybe try to feast up. No, it looks like he might just try to deny himself here. Uh! Oh, ho, ho, it's yeah, close. It was close. It's very close. Pwn and Ake were in the vicinity. Man, Pwn with this double mango build, too. Oh. Regen. 6.2 base regen. Sing Sing and Bambo went for another kill mid, but Arise had stolen 45 damage, so they couldn't get it done. Fluff down bottom. Ake. Oh, he's got the Harpy Stormcrafter. Look out. Jukes, Fluff, Saxon might be okay. He's going to get behind the tier 2 tower. And coming in is going to be Bone 7 as well. Some crazy shenanigans. More Impales being juked by the Nyx Assassin, not going for anything. It's like all over the map, we've seen people die past the tier 1s in multiple locations. Some crazy kills happening all over the place. And uh, it's still going the way of Kaipi, though. They have a, a forward advantage. But again, we haven't really looked at this Luna. She's been very quiet, obviously, but still getting a lot of CS. 20 CS, 10 denies in that top lane for Necroman. And an Aquila flying out as we speak. 
But for now, it's just shaping up to be a lot of early rotations. Dire Scan actually might find Bamboo here, and it looks like it will. But Necroman still is, I think, a little too far up. And with the... At least the DJ are starting to work. He's going to be slowed out. And this should be a kill. He could try to TP away, but 3 3's already found him. Cutting down that tree. And Necroman's literally crushed up. Purification will come next. And Omni Knight will find himself yet another kill. 2 0 -1, 1 to start off this game for 3 3. Nice play in that offlane. Man, things are looking nice for Kai P. 5 to 1 at this point. Sing Sing on top of the net worth right where OD wants to be. Yeah. Razor just dumpstered. And now Ake okay, can't even Ake's find anything. Dead, yeah. he tries to help. He's going to die to the last word. Oh, no, not, not Arise. No, Arise. He's too far up now. In trouble. He's They've dead. got the, the block as well from Bambo. The Astral will go as well. Southern Crush. Not enough mana. They will get this kill. It looks like a little more right click. Plasma Field will go. And Fluff finds himself a double kill on the Silencer. Silence. Stealing 8 Intelligence at this point. Some good stuff going the way of Kai P here. Four yeah, you're out of right. five heroes are radiant right now on the net worth on the top. That's pretty good. That's actually disgusting. Yeah. And Bone Seven, who wasn't farming particularly well, is still doing well enough at this point in time. I mean, they, they have some some farm heroes already at this point. Five and a half minutes in, and they're looking very solid. And they can continue to try to gank Necroman up here with 3-3. Three, three. He's going to be six. He, he's going to have his J suit. He's holding the point as we speak right now. Uh, he's got no purification for seven right now. He's actually on his own, but they can't really get this kill, even with Lucent Beam and Disruption and Shadow Poison. They really can't do it. Instead, they'll rotate back towards mid. Bambo is looking for another engagement. The Astral will come first. He sprints in. Slithering Crush will go. Arise gets the Plasma Field off. He needs help. He's going to go ahead and go for the like. There's the Sanity's Eclipse, and the last right click will get the kill for Bambo. MDL rotates in, but it's a little too late. And they will find themselves yet another kill in this mid lane, and Kai P are firing at all cylinders, Trent. I, I mean, oh, what is there to say about that? Just good setup really. being in from Sing Sing. Um, can't quite get there to save in time from MDL. I mean, oh. what more can he do, really? He's only level 4 Shadow Demon. Oh, no, Ake! Oh, he bit off more than he could chew. They were trying to set something up. They were trying to do some damage to Bone 7. He just pops the Rage, the Open Wounds. And he has enough mana for the Infest to get the kill as well. They might even get Pwned. Last word. Arcane Curse as well. Curse of the Silent. This is what it used to be. Pwn will be dropped momentarily, and Bone 7 will find himself. Yet another kill, and the TP back in from Ake. You need to be careful. Yes, you have two points on untouchable, but it's not going to matter if Rage comes out. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. So, now we're seven minutes in, and your Enchantress, like, Ake, okay, started out nice with that dive. Um, it's not like his kill score is bad, but he's like, you know, he's 2 2 0, whatever. Uh, not too bad, but he's not getting a farm for himself. He's not pressuring this bottom tower at all. He's level three, he's the lowest level in the game currently. Yeah, they, they got the lane road, the lanes they wanted from Kai P. And uh, one thing we didn't really talk about at the very start when we had the Omni and the Life Stealer down bottom, I think Kai P were thinking they were going to duel, um, duel aggro and use the Enchantress oh. roaming in to help out with a Luna and a Shadow Demon. And they were going to dodge it and send the Life Stealer up top. Oh. But the fact that they're not pressuring with a full lane, I think, might be a mistake from question mark. Like, I'm surprised they didn't put Nick's sol solo safe lane to get max levels attack. and send this aggressive, like, Luna. Shadow Demon and Enchantress bottom. It might it might come back to bite them. Also, what might come back to bite them? This Observer Ward scouted out a complete rotation from everyone from Radiant's Question Mark. They saw the smoke. They saw three heroes rotate in. They know Pwn is vendetted up, or more than likely that he is. They saw the TP coming in. MDL is going to be spotted first. Astral will get off before he can get the disruption animation going. It looks like a Slytherin Crush will follow suit, and a death instantly blown away by a lot of that damage, that magical and pure damage coming through from Kai P's side. It's yet another kill going the way of this Kai P lineup as Bone 7 continues to get more room down bottom. Yeah, he's just well on his way to his armlet. He has phase boots going. He can pressure the tower himself. I mean, Luna's doing the same thing up top, but. Necroman uh, certainly not going to come online and be as scary as this life stealer will be. Right. I mean, that's the that's the biggest thing. It's just he's not going to have enough room if they can start pushing down these towers. Uh, the one issue for me with Kaiki's lineup is they don't have the best push. I feel like life stealer's pretty good in that regard, uh, but their push is somewhat lacking in comparison to that of question. Who has extraordinarily strong push, especially when the game gets later and later as we progress through it. But they just have such an advantage right now that they can start fighting and taking down these towers rather quickly. Yeah, Kai P are more of a, like, we're just going to kill you. Like, we might not kill your, bow your tower that fast, but if you guys try and TP back in to defend it, we'll just kill you again. Whereas, like, if Question Mark win one fight, they can take a full objective with the lineup they have. Yes, absolutely. 
Another rotation spotted. Ake walks through the ward, but now Pwn is nearby. They know something is up now. The Dejan or coming through. Necroman, they oh, drop the sentry. Eclipse is there. Purification. He's got to use Repel and go for the TP, and he should be successful. No, the net comes out. They get the Dark Troll Summoner, and 3-3 is on his own. So the Crush misses from the low ground. There's the GA, but 3-3 in trouble. The Shadow Poison, he's low. Four stick charges, but he's got eight seconds to use them. They will get Pwn. Repel will not save him. Finally, they get the kill on the board. MDL, though, still getting chased down. Arcade Curse is there. They'll find a Slytherin Crush, and they'll find yet another kill. So they do have to give away 3-3. But still. Oh. Yeah, not bad. Use quite a few cooldowns, but they turn it around and pick up a couple more, so... Uh, it's pretty much a wash at the end. It's like a 50 gold advantage for Question Mark, and that only comes because they're down so much. And uh, Sing Sing... Does he have anything on this courier, or is he just still just... Nah, he's still just waiting on this four staff here, so uh, he'll again just continue to be, o you know, doing OD things. Those three heroes can just rotate so heavily. It'll be four now. The armlet's done, so Bone yep. Seven's probably gonna look for his first infest play with the Slardar. Yeah, and then it just gets worse and worse for Question Mark. They just they can't really fight effectively five versus five. They just don't have the utility, especially with the clips down. If the clips is up, maybe they can have a good fight going their way if they get a nice and pale off and, and some good damage from the Razor. But they really need to have Eclipse. This Luna can't really fight without it yet. So, man, Bambo's just gonna like go to lane. He's almost got his blink dagger. Once that blink is up, I just I feel for question mark, but it is gonna be terrifying. Like, it's not only just a life sealer bomb, it's a life sealer bomb who's then gonna get purified the second he jumps out. Mm -hmm. And they can, they can kill anyone on their team with an infest bomb, I'm sure. Yeah. And then yeah. if MDL's even there to go for a save play, like it doesn't it doesn't matter. If they see the shadow demon, they're just gonna, they're just gonna kill more people then if they go for a save play at this point. That's just how far Kai P is ahead. This is without the infest bomb, by the way. Bone Seven hits him like four times, and then Nyx Assassin is dead, even with Spike Carapace. It's just they have three kills to their name right now. The net worth advantage is almost 7,500 and eleven and a half minutes into this game. And they really need to get Necroman online, and he's not close. He's only got Nikila, a Helm of Iron Will, and Boots of Speed. He doesn't have threads, he doesn't have a full Helm of the Dominator. Um, his net worth is behind that of the Omnion at this point in time. It's a tough game, friend. I, I don't know what else to yeah. say other than it's a very tough game right now for question mark. And really Bambo's going to have his Blink lanes. Dagger too. Bambo's going to have his Blink Dagger in moments. Yeah, it's, it's just about done. <sighs> so many so many problems arise from the way they did it because they send like they send Nyx down bottom and they put the pressure in there with Fluff, sure, but Nyx and Enchantress don't have a lot to do together. Like Nyx can't offer that much in the very early stages of the game. He throws out like one stun and he's practically out of mana. Yeah. Um it's not like a Slider or someone who can like chase and has good right click damage as well. Uh like Slider Enchantress, maybe that would have worked, but now they're forced to pressure up into like this full five man group. They'll have to use Razor Ultimate if people TP in. Yeah. But you looked at that rotation, and they were going for Bone 7. They rotated all five heroes there. He rages right before the Lucent Beam comes out. If that caught, maybe they find a kill. But he just TPs away. And so all they're getting right now is the Tier 1 Tower. And that's Kai P will trade. Yeah, exactly. And they're going to get the Tier 1 Tower top lane for Kai P. And it's already dead at this point. And not only that, but Bone Seven split pushing mid too. So they're getting more off the map than Question Mark are. It's just, that's... That's it at this point in time. Bottom tower has Dyer's top tower so, has for, for question mark, you kind of just have to, I think, make more room for the, the Luna, but they're definitely yeah. just playing together as four or five right now. And it's pretty much all on Pwn to set something up on the first person. If they can find someone like the Omni Knight right at the start of fight, or ideally the Silencer, uh, either of those two, though, would be pretty huge for them. Yeah, I mean, just, just get at uh, least one of those heroes out of the foot. But they, they did the same thing with 3-3 three, three earlier. Oh, this... Oh, no, it's not going to work. Infest Bomb ready to go for Bambo. There's a lot of heroes nearby together for I question mark. In fact, fortune. four of them. In, in fact, the fifth is coming mid now as Necroman. Attack. They're going to group up. And this might be oh, the time where Kai says be a we're going to fight. Yeah, this is... This global they don't silence. know this is Blink Dagger is up. They shouldn't. And they are so grouped up right now. If there was any vision here for this Radiant team, Radiant they'd be able to find this kill. Attack. But they actually and have Sing good even has an end is... This is actually... Oh, that, that's definitely for the best that they left. Yeah. That was looking dangerous. Very dangerous. But here comes the counter smoke from Kai P to try to find some sort of initiation. Necroman knows that something's up. He's sitting back towards his tier 2 tower. He's lucent beaming to get CS. Now he's feeling a bit more confident, but that confidence might be his downfall. He's going to go back behind the tier 2. Oh, Bambo just goes a bit too far. Global will go. There's going to be the jump in the crush. They get the infest out, the open wounds, the rage as well. Now they use the static link. They want to get fluffed. Should survive this, however, even with all that right click and extra damage for a rise. 
it's not going to matter. And they find the most important hero in the game for question mark, and they take the Luna down, stifling her farm yet again. Man, looking good. I don't know. Like, uh, big rotation up top, sure. But what were the other four heroes doing when your Luna just TPs the farm at tier 2? Just, like, farming some jungle neutral camps over here. Nyx yeah. gets a little bit of push going, I suppose. That was the one instance they were not playing. It's like four or five for the past like two or three minutes, and it does actually end up getting him killed. They smoked at the perfect time for Kaipi, really. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. This is the uh, the point in the game where we tend to see this like vertical split start to come out now, where yeah. Radiant side kind of plays over here, Dire side plays over here, uh, and that Radiant's does favor Dire in a lot of ways, obviously, because you get to control Roche. They don't have the best lineup for it. So Ake just narrowly avoids being astral. Oh, bam! Uh, he's not going to avoid dying though, unfortunately. Oh my, that purification did some serious work there. Three ah, it's just like half her HP. Yeah, it's just know. gone. <laughs> Enchantress susceptible to, to magic nukes, as we've all found out the past couple of months, but Hurricane Plex coming soon for Sing, and uh, with the farm that they have now, it just feels like question mark are on a timer, and there's not much time left. Pwn is going to get blown up by another combo. The bomb comes through, and Bone7 picks up yet another kill. Now they're encroaching upon MDL. He'll get astral and he'll probably die. Although, he does get the disruption off, but it will not save him for long. Man, look, they have no vision. They, they didn't even like, see these guys up here. They could have TP'd at this point, and Kaipi are just fearless. They're like, nah, I'm sure they're not coming. He's just dead. Yeah, they have one ward, it's mid. There's actually two. They have one on the, a very defensive ward, actually, and then a very aggressive one that they just put down. Top tower it it just feels as if this game is getting closer and closer to ending with every kill that they secure, especially on Necroman. He is going to go for the Dragonlance. He knows he needs to fight a bit earlier on, but he's going to get destroyed by the Sundering Crush and Bone7 coming in. The Eclipse will go, but Bone7 is just raging. And Fluff will take the majority of the damage. He's the only target in the vicinity, but it's still a dead Luna. Pone and Arise are hightailing that out of their Bamboo. Goes for the guess. He has a gem, by the way, on him. He has a gem of true sight <laughs> at 16 and a half like, minutes. Oh my god, a kill! <laughs> nope. Oh, poor guy. Yeah, that's uh, the closeout item for sure. Bambo fearless. They could just keep pressuring and keep pressuring, and inevitably, I think, question mark will break. There's just not really any way for them. They, they really need to get this Luna involved. She needs to get somehow like a team up with her Eclipse, but it's so hard to do that with Repel, with, with Rage. Global Silence. Yeah, exactly. I, she, she melts to this Amplify Damage Lifestealer, too. The, really, the best thing they can do is maybe have a Rise get off the full static. Oh, okay, it's just... Hello? <laughs> oh, he's dead. It's not the right place to be. Oh, I love Bull 7's not here. Yeah, they don't have enough national burst? Maybe with another Slithering Crush here, it's physical, but they can get the job done. Damn damage on especially. However, they're turning it. Here comes the global fluff. No, you can't man fight this. He wants Ake, and he's going to get the kill, but he's going to die for it and give a loose beam up to Necroman. Oh, they're going to try a, a backstab in Fest play. Bambo's like on 20, like 20% 20 HP, and he's got a gem, but they don't really care. Pone is dead. The gem actually works out. MDL realizes he's in trouble. They don't really care. They're low in HP. They're just going to keep killing people. They force him down to the low ground. Which would be impressive if they got the kill, but it looks like they won't be successful. At least Sing actually has to force himself forward. Yeah, that that was a nice play from 3-3, and they will get the kill, yeah. actually, it looks like. 3-3 used the four step uh, aggressively against they Rise. They have Sandlies if they really need it. Yeah, they, they really, they just get Bambo to jump in with this delivery crush, and that's three, four heroes dead, by the way. Oh, they can Roche whenever they want, they have Lifestealer Slardar. It's a net worth graph, like, Trent, 12,000. I don't even minutes. want to look at it, honestly. Not, not oh, great. Geez. Not great. Whew. This is yep. one of those games right now for question mark. It's one of those games. I don't want to say it's an impossibility to come back, but it's this uh, this type of thing keeps happening. <laughs> it's not, not looking great. Okay, literally walks up and dies. He's like, yeah, I'll just go to the two two. All right, I'm dead. Yeah, the aggressive vision here, the radiant. Now they're trying to scout this shadow demon bait. <laughs> they have a ward. He was on it. He's like, I probably did if I go back towards my tower. It's so funny. They have the Desolator now done for the Life Stealer with the Echo Saber already. He's got the most net worth in the game. Let's just check out their items real quick. Why don't we? Hurricane Pike, like we talked about, 3 3 already has Zarkanes, uh, a Force Staff, and another Energy Booster to begin with. And I, I don't know. I don't know, Trent. I don't know. Yeah. There's uh, pretty much n not too much left in this one. They don't really have the high ground wombo combo. All they can hope for is Kaipi throw themselves 
into like the fountain or something like one by or one they, fours. yeah they throw themselves into the fountain or throw themselves into just a bad position and they just die one by one uh, that seems to be one of the few ways they can get back in this game short of necroman getting a five man team wipe somehow they're gonna scan they know they're at roche and i don't really know does this that change what you do at all no i don't really know <laughs> if you can do anything i mean if, if you go for it you're going to die probably and the game will end if you don't go for it they're going to push your base and the game will probably end it's just one of those catch 22 situations where you can't really do anything um, they'll try to take their their jungle back which is one of the better op opportunity i guess that's the another option they can go for just throw some wards down try to take their jungle back but unfortunately for bambo, bambo clowns yeah bambo actually could make some bambo plays and that might be a way that question mark can get back in the game but now he's gonna back away he's gonna go with the rest of his team he's like i have the jam i'll play a little bit carefully here and here we go though this might be the perfect opportunity for question mark they will have eclipse back up and ready to go but it's already too late bambo's gotten a two-man crush the global will come out ga is there as well but arise is getting a lot of damage he has right now 73 they've already blown up one there's the sanities he just dies so quickly the eclipse is up great and pale bambo might fall sing sing taking some damage from the high ground but necroman is done eclipse now out and of course he's gone sing sing low but he is completely fine until Aki gives him the last javelin but in the end it is a five for one bone seven one kill short of getting a rampage and uh that's to about how we expected it to go i believe trent yeah they, they had to go for something but that is it that is a quick and clean game up from kaipi ending it with four heroes in the top four because they are owning that net worth chart and fluffy even managed to get himself above two of the heroes on the dire side so that was impressive it. stuff. Yeah. Um, the lanes, man. I don't know. Enchantress, Nyx Assassin, like the Enchantress pressuring the bottom tower, um, pulling supports. Like those support rotations can't happen on your Razor in the mid lane if you're uh, like aggroing down to the bottom. Like Slider has to be down there then because he's going to be working in that sort of a tandem. It's like a solo off lane Omni. If they do some sort of play where like they can't send Omni off lane solo against a safe lane Nyx, like that's not going to do anything. Uh, maybe you'll dumpster the Knicks, but who cares? Because your bottom lane's not going to go well. So, I, don't, I think, like, Kaipi just got the lanes they wanted. Question mark didn't um, really utilize their enchantress to its fullest, it yeah, felt like to me. Yeah. And that was their one key victory here. Kaipi looked dominant in that game. That's that's all we can really say. And it is just game one of a two-game series, and it is finished in 10, 20 minutes. That That was some impressive stuff, but... With that, we will take a quick break, guys. We'll jump into our last game of the day here momentarily. It is going to be Kai P versus Question Mark. Game number two with, of course, myself, Mott, as well as Mott Packs coming up shortly here on Moonducks TV. Stick around. <laughs> 